All right, quick recap for today. Uh, I traded one ticker DDL and uh, I got some good lessons towards the end. So stick around um, and we'll go over some of those uh, lessons. Uh, but let's jump right into the trade. So uh, today this one was, uh, I was short biased mainly and uh, it had a nice, kind of nice day to um, extension. And a lot of shorts were probably fighting this thing, right? So you got the cheap borrows, um, you know, it's bigger float, so it's very easy to borrow. And, you know, typically these are grinders when they're the bigger floats. So you'll see these kind of just hold a trend and grind and grind and grind until they finally get enough shorts out and then and then they unwind. So uh, the, the idea here was I was noticing this or I recognize this trend. So if we draw a line here, um, you know, very obvious trend here. And, you know, I kind of kind of got in with a starter here, anticipating the trend might break here. And I, you know, I took a smaller position here because I wasn't, there was no confirmation yet. And, you know, uh, whenever you're above a trend, you always want to assume it's going to hold. So until it breaks, it's probably going to hold. Uh, so that was kind of the mentality here. And as soon as I saw it hold, I just cut off that starter and just, you know, moved on. And, you know, it made a nice push here, a pretty nice push. Um, and what I did here was actually, I went long. I took a really small starter long. Um, I'm usually not sizing nearly as much as my short trades on the long side, uh, especially if it's a, a ticker I'm particularly short biased on. Uh, but what I was thinking here is they might actually end up squeezing it through high of the day, uh, getting some shorts out and then dumping it. You know, I was kind of thinking about that because Typically, you see that pretty often. Uh, they kind of clear out the shorts through that high of the day. Maybe they would have shoved it to seven bucks here and then unloaded. So that was my kind of uh, thought process there. But they ended up kind of just struggling with it here, um, holding it down. So I had to stop out there. I just took it off and I immediately flipped short. As soon as I saw the tape, uh, heavy seller came in on the tape here. I flipped short and I, I filled as much size as I could there and um let it just kind of let it work so you know it hadn't broken the trend at the time just yet as you can see the line was kind of still they were kind of still holding it but i was really convicted here because you know this high of the day breakout attempt failed and when you get that fail like a huge red candle like this that means most of the longs here that were thinking breakout are going to be thinking okay we it's time to sell and that's kind of the mentality right so if longs don't get their breakouts, what are they going to do? When you see a big red candle like this, they're probably going to start to panic and think, you know, this thing's starting to look bearish and I'm going to sell. So, so I was really uh, convicted in the trend breaking here and sure enough it did. And we got a, as you can see, a very nice unwind once that trend broke. So, you know, waiting for that trend to break is, is the key. You know, I always, I always tell you guys, I always, I always mention in my videos, you know, the trend is, you know, it's your friend. So unless the trend is breaking, you don't want to be short. And, you know, that is the reason for me, I, I do like to anticipate, uh, you know, the trend breaks sometimes. And as you can see here, like I did here, but I always go with smaller risk, right? You're not, you're not um, getting that confirmation if the trend is still holding. So why go in full size or full risk when you don't have that confirmation? It just doesn't make sense to me, right? And this is where we're going to get into some of the lessons I was um, I was talking about earlier. So uh, the main lesson here is um, how to use position sizing to your advantage. Um, you know, I know a lot of traders like to stick with the same position size for every single trade, and that's totally fine. That's great. I totally get that. Uh, but for me personally, I like to gauge it based off the conviction I have per trade. So when you look at this chart, you see, you know, you see a trade here, you see a trade here, you see a trade here. But what you don't see is the different position sizing I'm using for each of those trades. So for this trade, for example, as I mentioned, it was a low conviction trade. I was just taking a starter because it was a low conviction trade and I didn't have that confirmation. Had it broke this level, this trend, I would have added to the winner and then been, been in full size with a higher, higher position or a larger position. Uh, but because it didn't break, I decided to stop out and because it was such a small position, that stop out was barely anything. It didn't didn't impact me emotionally. It didn't it didn't phase me at all. It was totally uh, it was like a little fly on the wall. So so then uh, flipping long, same same idea, right? I wasn't 
I definitely wasn't convicted in this long, but I thought, you know what, they might be able to squeeze this through high of the day, so I'm going to take a small little position here in case they do. And if they don't, worst case scenario, I stop out for a small loss again. And that's exactly what I did. So they didn't squeeze it, no problem, stopped out for a tiny loss. And that's when I got this, this candle, the conviction candle. So this is where I get my conviction. I, I see the tape, I see the seller hitting the tape very heavy. Um, you know, they could have easily squeezed this thing to seven, but instead the seller decided, nope, I'm gonna sell. And that's when I joined in. So I joined in with my full risk here. And that is why this trade, you know, it, it towers over these two losses because the position sizing was, for one, it was much, much larger. And the second reason is the trade worked, right? So I, I let it work. Um, so not only is the risk reward bigger, but the, the position size is bigger, which, you know, you can have like a 20% win rate trading like this and still be very profitable. So in this case today, I had a, obviously I took two losses and one win. So I had a roughly a 30% win rate. I still had a great day because this was a monster win compared to these tiny losses. And I am still trailing a little bit of the position right now. So I might actually start to cover it out here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to cover it. This thing can this thing can probably fade down to 550s, 540s. Who knows? It, heck, it might even go red on the day. I don't know. But uh, but this was my main profit target, the six dollar area. So I'll just respect it and uh, and cover out here. And I'm only trailing a very small position, so it doesn't really matter if it goes much further. Um, might as well just take it off here. But but uh, yeah, that's the main lesson for today. So. You know, try to implement that into your trading, you know, see if it works for you, that different position sizing. Um, you know, again, like I said, when I when I take my full risk, I'm still well within my risk tolerance. I'm not going crazy size or anything like that. It's just it's just my full risk tolerance, the risk that I'm comfortable with, the most risk I'm comfortable with. Those are that's what I'm taking when I have the highest conviction on my trades. When I have low conviction, I'm still taking trades so that I can be involved in them in case they do work and then I can potentially add to the winners but when they don't work that's totally fine because it's such a small loss it's a smaller position right so um, yeah that's what works for me um, give it a try in your trading see if it works for you if it doesn't you know, no big deal if you'd like to stick to the same position sizing for every trade the same bet size totally fine you know most traders do and that's that's totally fine uh, but this is how I prefer to trade and, and it works works great for me so so give that a try. Uh, let me just cover out here. Ah, you know what? I'll, I'll trail it a little bit more. So that's it for the recap, guys. I uh, hope you took some lessons away from it, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, cheers.